Time to do some more fun stuff. <laughs> Time to do some more fun stuff with main stage, and I'm gonna continue straight where I was left from the previous video. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't already, and let's kick a notch. Okay, time to start add some sounds and effects to this session. And as I told you in the previous video, I want to leave my patches as individual as possible and same goes with my effect channels. So what I try to do is that I leave this acoustic guitar channel as pure and clean as possible. I only add a little bit of EQ and maybe compressor to make the sound as processable as possible. Uh, let's start with the EQ. Put the analyzer on. Solid. Take that mod off just a little bit, not too much. And then the compressor. Let's let's just use the studio ECA. Then for the each effect that I want to use in a song or part of the song, I create an independent aux channels, like one aux channel for reverb and one aux channel for uh, distortion or sub guitar or something like that. And I have saved some presets here that you can find on the settings, user, user channel strip settings. These are all the sounds that I've found when I have fiddled around with Mainstage and found some use, useful multi-purpose effects. So I have saved these channel strips here. Let's say, let's take like a long plate, for example. Yeah. And then we put a send to the acoustic guitar channel. Oh wait, let's see that the bus input is correct. Let's make that bus 1, and then we send, yeah, bus 1 to long plate. Put that 0. Maybe like a distorted reverb. But I'm bum.
let's have another effect channel for sub bass. Here we go. Already at the place. Use the headphones, or if you have nice speakers that go low enough. Very nice. Let's just make one more channel for some kind of distortion. Let's see what we can find here actually. Let's make it let's make let's actually make this from the beginning. So we name it distortion. Let's see what we can find like some stack distortion. Let's take a just take this one. Let's see. Put this on solo so we hear stuff and we have to send some audio to the distortion. Let's take a little bit this down now so when we start to add some drive. So really mildly here let's say like minus 15 maybe something like that So let's say now that I like this distortion channel strip so much that I think it would be nice to be able to have it as quickly as possible in my next patch, maybe. So what would I do here in the first patch? I can either copy this to the other channel strip, copy channel strip, or I can just save channel strip setting and then you can name it whatever you want and then it appears 
here at your usual channel strip settings. And this is why I use channel strips for effects to get that maximum flexibility and easy adjustments for all the different effect channels, especially these volume faders. Instead of stacking all the effects here on one guitar channel. So it's way easier to adjust these sounds according to the space where you are playing or the PA you are playing through. For example, if the concert hall has loads of natural reverb, I can easily dial down all my reverb effects to make sure that the combination of concert hall's reverb and my own reverbs doesn't make the sound too muddy. Or if the venue's PA has really powerful subwoofer, so this sub guitar channel usually like goes <laughs> through the roof, so I can just dial this down heavily if there's like really good and big subwoofer in the PA. It takes a bit time and it's a bit laborious if you have like 10 patches here for one concert and you have to go each of them through and manually adjust all the reverbs and effects. But hey, that's what sound checks are for and that I think you would do with any effects that you are using. There are a couple of things I like to watch when I'm building sounds. First is this CPU meter, you can find it here on top. If you double click it opens this monitor which indicates how much of your CPU power you are currently using and how much individual effects are taking your CPU. So this is really easy and quick way to see what effects are really CPU heavy and you might want to avoid using and just find another option. For example, in my case, all other effects take so little CPU, but the one reverb that I'm using, the Sound Toys Little Plate, takes really big portion of the, of the current CPU usage. And if you are using this for the first time, don't be afraid of this percent indicator, which the common sense would say that if you reach the 100% your computer is in maximum state and maximum load in the CPU front, but that's not actually the case. I believe this percentage is defined by how many cores you have in your laptop or your computer. So, for example, I think I have like eight cores in my laptop here in the MacBook Pro. So, actually, my maximum capacity would then be 800%. And now I'm only using like, my peaks are like somewhere around 50%. So, I have loads of free space with my CPU, which is really nice. The second thing that I like to monitor when I'm making sounds and building patches, which is kind of neat feature in main stage, is this latency display under your faders, which, which automatically calculates how much digital latency this whole channel strip is producing. So you can see here that my sub-guitar channel and especially the Wave Slow Air plugin are making a quite substantial amount of latency. But this is something that I can still live with. 
And this is something you can actually use for your advantage. For example, with the reverb, you kind of generate pre-delay effect for your reverb. If your reverb doesn't have a pre-delay feature, you can actually use the latency to make it kind of pre-delay effect so that you get more of that three-dimensional sound image with your dry acoustic guitar sound and uh, reverb sound. I don't actually know how accurate this latency display is, but by using this number and a sharp ear, you should be able to monitor if you get too much latency and the delay for between all your sounds. Usually CPU heavy plugins also generate more latency and what I've found is that most high-end reverbs for example that need loads of time kind of to process the sound and generate the reverb create lots of latency or other plugins that need quite a lot heavy power to process the sound like the waves low air or let's say that I would use that uh, one shimmer effect that I showed you in the previous random video. Yeah, cool. That is for today now and on the next video I'm gonna dive even deeper with different effects and actually explain a little bit my philosophy, how I'm using mainstage and how I want to work with mainstage. So, stick around! Hit that like button, subscribe and see you on the next video.